<laughs> well, I tell you what, uh, with the weekend coming up, the weather's obviously right. been very sunny, and here in Northeast Ohio, we love the sun, but are you always protecting yourself the way that you should? You might have a freckle here and there, a new mm. one. Is it cancer, melanoma? Well, we're going to answer that question for you today. Joining us this morning is Dr. Lydia Parker. Doctor, thank you so much for coming on the show. Joe's going to scooch over. She's with the Parker Skin and Aesthetic Clinic. Thank you again for coming. Thank you for having me. Sunscreen. Is this the most important thing we're going to be talking about this morning? I mean, why is it so important for everybody to apply? Really, everybody should wear sunscreen every day, ideally. But you know what? More important than that is just staying out of the sun being in a shady spot. Mm. You know, when you're by the pool, you want to be on the shady chair. Now, see, when you were looking at me, Joe was making a face. <laughs> it's impossible to do that. <laughs> Especially in Northeast Ohio. I mean, and all kidding aside, you know, when well, it's well, sunny out, we all want to get out. Exactly. We're right. under rocks for how many months out of the year, you know, and we're like the snakes that have to sun themselves. I do understand. We've come a long way. I remember, you know, my wife will brag about, and Eric, I don't know about you, baby oil, you know, when you were laying out years oh, ago. Oh, to get that golden tan yeah. color. Yeah, I mean, you know, and uh, we have learned. Foil. I know. Yeah. Did you ever? Never did. Never did. Never wanted to. My wife will talk about going on the roof of the house and doing that. So, <laughs> so I mean, we have gotten a lot more educated as, uh, as time went on here. But to stay out of the sun is the first advice. That's a tough one to follow. Right. And, you know, I never tell someone to sell their boat. I never tell them to <laughs> give up golfing or stop <laughs> playing tennis or stop gardening. But I do tell them, you know, maybe you could do your gardening early in the day or late in the day rather than the middle of the yeah, day. I'll, I'll take that. Uh, What's the difference between the SPFs? I know a friend of mine just gave a gift as a uh, 100 SPF for a friend that's very fair skinned. I thought that was kind of funny, but really what is the difference between them? You know, it's a good question and the FDA said no more 100 SPFs because it's very misleading. A 100 SPF is not twice as good as a 50 SPF. So starting, it was supposed to be starting this summer, the new FDA guidelines that a sunblock could only claim SPF 50 plus. Okay. Can't claim any higher numbers. Now the companies are given an extension. Now they can wait till next year for the new guidelines, but you won't see any more 100 starting next year. We've interviewed people that said after 25 or 30, it's all the same. It's basically marketing. You're just charging for a higher SPF. In your medical and professional opinion, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Well, now the government is saying up to 50. After that, it doesn't matter because here's why. Most people don't put on nearly enough sunblock. So if you really put on enough, you know, a 30 or a 15 might be plenty, but most people put on half as much or a quarter as much sunscreen as they should. As far as skin conditions, a lot of people might have eczema or skin conditions, so can sunscreen or different kinds of sunscreen, can it actually cause more harm than good in people who have a skin condition? A lot, you know, most sunscreens contain chemicals. They're, if you look at the label, it's these long chemical names that are hard to pronounce. If you have eczema, sensitive skin, or if you want to put sunblock on your baby, look for a chemical-free sunblock. Uses no, chem no long chemical names that you can't pronounce. Mm. You get your sun protection from zinc or titanium and no artificial uh, chemicals, all natural minerals. You can put it right on your sunburn. It won't burn or sting. You can put it on your baby. You can put it close to your eyes. It won't burn or sting. Do you recommend the aerosol or the lotion when it comes to sunblock? Well, everyone, That's a great question. Yeah, everyone likes the sprays. I mean, for it's kids, yeah. you know, when you That's have the sunscreen, well, three the kids. Is, yeah, <laughs> because if some people, when they put on the lotion, you could see the hand marks. And <laughs> right, absolutely. Like That's that you just stay in, indoors after what it looks like. Right, 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 right. The sprays are certainly fun. Don't breathe it. You know? Um, right. But <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never done that. <laughs> you know, the key is to put plenty on. You know, when, when they label it as a 30 or a 50, right. they're, they're testing it using a generous amount. So make sure you put plenty on. I've got a question. How do you tell the difference when you do get a sunspot on your body, whether that's a normal sunspot or maybe it could be cancerous or precancerous? How, how do you tell the difference? You know, we've all got moles, we've all got little brown spots. Hopefully they all kind of look the same, you know, uh, little brown dots, same shade of brown throughout. But you want to look for the ugly duckling. And what we mean by that is if you have a spot that looks really different than all the others, mm. 
that could be a bad sign. You want to get it checked. And there's, we have a graphic, the A, B, C, D. Can you explain what we're looking at right yeah, now? Yeah, asymmetry. You know, the top half of the mole should look the same as the bottom half of the mole, and the right side of the mole should look the same as the left side of the mole. When it's asymmetric, um, that could be a bad sign. The borders, it should be round or oval, normal moles. They shouldn't be jagged. A mole should not be shaped like a jigsaw puzzle piece. If it's shaped like that, it could be abnormal. What about the color? Um, I have a friend who has a black mole. Black, yeah. dark black. Hmm. Black can be bad. Uh -oh. Black mole should definitely be checked. <laughs> okay. Um, and, and possibly be biopsied. So if anyone has black, that's bad. You know, normal moles are brown. Mm -hmm. So if it's got other colors in it, any blue, any red, any white, get it checked. So what about a mole that's been around forever, birthmark if you will, like mm -hmm. a Cindy Crawford kind of trademark mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that my, you know, my wife had, a, oh, I used to call it her chocolate chip and then all of a sudden <laughs> she went to the doctor and they said we're going to take that off. Yeah, you know, some people think I know this mole's okay because I've had it since right. the day I was born. Those moles actually have higher risk. Okay. Those, that mole that you're born with is often your biggest, darkest, deepest mole, and it actually has a greater skin cancer risk, so get it checked. Wow. Skin cancer, melanoma. They're actually different, correct? Right. Melanoma Be is the deadliest type of skin cancer. Because right? I think some people probably coincide the two and they think it's the same thing. So what are the differences? Right. The most common type of skin cancer is basal cell skin cancer. It's the most common, least serious, easily cured, won't kill you. You might lose a part of your nose. You might lose a part of your ear, but you're going to still live, live long from it. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. But melanoma is the type that often looks like a black mole. It can spread throughout your body. It can be deadly. In this country, one American dies every hour from melanoma. Oh my gosh. So, um, and That's the key shocking. is, yeah, yeah, and the key is to catch it early. When you catch it early, you're fine. So, you know, May is National Skin Cancer Prevention Month. So, this is a really good time to talk about it. Um, you want to actually have your moles checked by a doctor every year. We used to say starting at age 40, now we say starting at age 20 because melanomas used to be something that older people got, and now it's unfortunately very common, especially in women in their 20s. Because of the tanning craze? Because of the tanning beds. Mm -hmm. In the last 40 years, the rate of melanoma in young women, ages 18 to 39, has not just doubled, not just tripled, but gone up eightfold. Oh, wow. wow. And it's because of the tanning beds. Genetics, can this actually be passed on through genes like basically everything else? Absolutely, absolutely. If melanoma and skin cancer run in your family, then your risk is higher. All right, now what about some prevention besides sunscreen? We talked about that. What else can we do? Um, Live under a rock? <laughs> <laughs> Live in a cave. Go in a cave and don't come out. No. Um, protective clothing, you know, cover up where you can, wear a hat, wear a visor. Uh, like I said, find the shady chair by the pool. But kind of be aware of your moles in your spots so that if something new comes up, something's changing, get that checked. Um, and we say have your birthday suit checked on your birthday every year. Once a year, that's I how you remember. Buy a really good way. Just put this by a professional, okay? Exactly. It doesn't mean that exactly. it's all done. Yes. Yeah. We're covering everyone's faces right, right. here. Dr. Absolutely. Lydia Park, thank you so much for coming thank on you. the show. The Parker Skin and Aesthetic Clinic, 216-464-7333. Theparkerclinic.com for more information.